forensic evidence on the shroud tells a three-day story of a dead body that becomes a living body. The image process on the shroud was a two-step process. The bloodstains were first, a body-to-cloth contact process, but the 3D body images over the bloodstains, those are not the result of a contact image process. In order to create the body images over the bloodstains, the body itself had to be separated from the linen and emitting radiated energy. That is why they call it distance information. And in order to create distance information, there must of course be what? A distance between the body and the cloth when the image was created. Yes, that means the body was not touching the cloth during the image process. So the forensic evidence on the shroud tells a three-day story of a dead body that becomes a living body, a resurrection. Was there really light and radiation emitting out of this body right here? There is a way to find out. And that way is by putting it, the Shroud of Turn image, on a 3D surface plot and spreading apart the light and dark parts of the image to the maximum. So let's do that right now. This is the ultimate moment of truth for the Shroud of Turin. Can it pass the hardest test on a 3D imaging software program? This is the hard moment of truth for the Shroud of Turin. And like gold just tested by fire, we are now putting the Shroud of Turin into the furnace of affliction to see if it can survive. No image can survive this test unless the process that created it was holographic, meaning the 3D object itself was emitting light. Okay, we're at the halfway point here. All other images that have gone through this test have failed, even at the halfway point. They utterly distort, they become awkward looking, and even unrecognizable. give you an idea of how far we have spread apart the lights and darks of the shroud image. We're going to move this back. We're going to dial this back so we can see the whole picture. This is how far apart we spread the lights and darks apart. There is no way a man-made image could survive this test and remain stable and intact. No way impossible. This is the shroud information. This is the skull information. The skull utterly distorted out when it was placed at the max gain settings on the software. Here is why. 
holographic information is very tight and compacted and it has no extreme variations in light intensity there's no extreme bright and there's no extreme dark that is a characteristic of a holographic image process and note the skull information has extreme variations in light intensity from dark and to light all the way up here but this is almost like spectrographic analysis of the 3d information on the shroud of turin the only way we've been able to replicate this only one way worked over the last two years and it was taking a statue head covering it with glow-in-the-dark uv light emitting paint and submerging it underwater and then standing over it in a dark room and taking a photograph with the camera lens close to the surface of the water. And these are the results that we got. Near perfect 3D information, just like the shroud. The reason we put the statue underwater with food coloring is because that slows down the speed of light approximately 70,000 miles per second slower. And any other method we use would not work. But here's the shroud information. Here's the statue information. Both have excellent 3D information. And when we look at the spectrographic analysis of the 3D info on the shroud information and the statue, they look almost identical. This is not an easy process to duplicate. It involves the 3D object itself emitting light and the speed of light slowed down. No other method worked. But this is a side view of the statue head underwater on the 3D analyzing software. This is the statue head out of water side view. And that's the statue head underwater with food coloring. Obviously, we can see that when you don't use food coloring, you get this result. Why? Because the speed of light is traveling too fast. It cannot be moving at 186,000 miles per second. That's why all other images fail on the 3D analyzing software. That's one aspect of the mystery of the shroud that we have solved. One of the reasons that the shroud image looks so good on a 3D analyzing software is because the speed of light had to have been slowed down to create the shroud image or the image was created outside of time. Here's the shroud information, here's the statue information. They both have the same 3D information. And one thing that we note, the lines along the side of the face, the darkness along the sides, that's because a holographic image process cannot record the complete sides of an object. We see the same with the statue head. That's, the, that's why we see the dark lines along the side of the face. This is Dr. John Jackson of the Shroud Return Research Project. He had his hand x-rayed and he compared it to the hand images on the Shroud of Turin. And let's go to a more close-up view here. What he did is he turned his thumb inward like that. And on the x-ray image, that shows on an x-ray image, you see the dark silhouette of the thumb image underneath the hand. I had my hand x-rayed like five days ago, so this is a really recent photograph, but we, we needed to update this display so we could see more clearly what we're talking about here. When an x-ray image is inverted, and this is usually how it's seen, we can see more detail, but again, we can, we can see the thumb. It shows up as kind of a, a bright spot on the film plate, especially in this area around the third finger. For some reason, when a thumb is tucked underneath, it has a tendency to go to the to the third finger. And we see here on the image of the shroud, the tip of this bright spot here on the hand does indeed go to the third finger. When an x-ray image is inverted, and this is usually how it's seen, we can see more detail, but again, we can, we can see the thumb. It shows up as kind of a, a bright spot on the film plate. On the sapia version of the shroud, it shows up as kind of a dark silhouette. This is my hand with my thumb turned inward. Just like that, my thumb is turned inward. 
I'm just going to pull this away. This is the x-ray of my hand. This is the Shroud of Turin, and this is right here where we believe the tip of the thumb is. You can see the tip. You can see the same here on my hand. When we match those two together, you know, it falls into place. I mean, it's not like a fingerprint match or a perfect match, but we can see that this right here, that is the thumb of the man in the shroud. It imaged, even though the thumb is underneath the hand, the x-rays went through the hand, went through this area first, then through the other part of the hand, and in the process of doing it, that was somewhat, the x-rays could not image all the way through both tissues, so it images as a dark silhouette, like that. And when it's inverted, we see more detail. Let's go to this image here. This is the same, this again is my hand. I'm gonna turn the opacity to zero. We can see this. I mean, it's, it's clearly obvious. We don't need a microscope to see it. And right there, that is my hand that was x-rayed a couple days ago. And when we line up, like right there, that's where the tip of the thumb is. That's where the tip of my thumb is. And we just match those two things up, and it just falls right into place. You know, extremely compelling evidence of what? Radiation emitted from the body. As soon as we establish this thumb that was tucked underneath the hand, imaged on the Shroud of Turin, that eliminates every skeptic theory that has ever been dreamed up. And then crosses a line into a spectacular supernatural event.